All right, let's jazz up our XPaths a little bit by using some of the special characters that do um, interesting and different things with, with our XPaths. We'll start back on our um, sample document here, and I will begin with the forward slash, which was part of the part of the absolute XPaths, but I want to describe it um, in and of itself. Whoops. I just want to get a backslash with nothing else, or forward slash with nothing else. Okay, so I hit that, and notice down here it just says document, which means I'm, and it doesn't select anything when I, uh, when I, when I click it or I double click it. And that means that I'm in effect right here, right before the root tag, right before that prototype tag is what the, the, the forward slash gets me. Okay, so that's just a little bit more about that forward slash tag. Let's look at the whatever sign. Well, the whatever sign is a star, and we're going to start using the whatever sign to jazz up our um, our our X path. So what if I do um, forward slash prototype? Um, then you can see that I get this. I select this prototype tag, the entire prototype. Now if I say forward slash and I type in one of its children, then I will get just one of its children. But instead, let me type in the star. Star means whatever, whatever child there is a prototype. And now you can see down here that I get three children, the about tab, the info types tag, and the access structure tag. Those are the three children of, of prototype. Now what if I was to do prototype star slash star? Now what would I get? Think about it for a second. You might even want to stop the video and think what exactly would that do. And when you're ready, we can run it. And now you'll see that what it does is it selects all the second level children, all the children under the children. Can you see how it selected first the title element under about, then the author element under about, then the image element under about, and then it would uh, select introduction. And then when we're finished with the with the uh, about elements, it'll go through all the second level children of the info type element. So what I did was I selected all the children of all the children, all the second level children. Similarly, I can do all the third level children this way, and now I get 136 items instead of uh, a smaller number that I would get from uh, this, for example, where I only get three. Okay, so that's the star. The star stands in for any element. Um, it's uh, any element, and if I want any attribute, so I could go this prototype dot slash star slash star slash at star and that'll give me any of the attributes. Let me just make sure there are some. Yeah. So there are only four items at the um, second level under prototype that are attributes. And here's one. It's the citation attribute. And here's one. The introduction has an ID attribute. The hierarchy has an ID attribute, etc. So again, I use that at to signify not elements but attributes. So that's the star. Stands in for any element, or in this case, any attribute, regardless of its name. So that's a lot like a star works in um, in file specifications, for example, where you say star dot star, which would mean any file with any name and any extension. Okay, what's next? The wherever sign. This is a really useful sign. You'll use the star sign sometimes, but you'll use the wherever sign a lot. Wherever means I don't really know where in the file it, or where in the instance it is, but I want it anyway. So let's go back over here and let's play around with that. So what if I want, what if I say whack whack, that's wherever, movie. I will get, come on, 15 movies. Okay, it didn't matter where they were. Suppose I want to go all the way down here to this uh, date avail attribute. Notice it's an attribute. I can say, Whack, whack, um, at data veil, and I'll get all the data veils. See how I'm going to the, avail the data available attribute? So whack, whack means wherever you are in the file, I don't care whether what the, what the, what the actual path is, um, I want to get to it. Now, one thing to understand is, well, we'll get there later, but let me just introduce it right now. It might be a little much, much for you to understand at this point, but whack whack, the, any, the anywhere um, sign, is not a relative path. No matter, where you, um, no matter where you are in the document, it will always go anywhere else in the document. So if you want whack whack, um, if you use whack whack alone, you, um, it will always return all the all the instances of the thing that you specify regardless of where you are in the file so it's not sensitive to where you are in the um, in the instance okay so as I said that might be a little hard to understand now we'll come back around to that later 
Okay, so there's the, the, the wherever sign. Let's do the up sign. This is kind of an interesting one. The up sign is dot dot slash. So let's do this. We're going to go back over here. And now uh, we'll go, uh, let's see, whack whack uh, movie. No, whack whack availability. Let's do that. Whack whack availability. That's giving me all the availability tags. And since they're inside the movies, um, there's 15 of them, just like there are 15 movies. And notice, prototype. And now this little one in here, bracket one, means the first prototype element. And of course, there's only one. But then here's the first info types element. Element. Here's the first movies element. Then here's the first movie element on movies. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So that's a little index that tells you which child I am under my parent. I'm the first child under the um, under the document. I'm the first child under prototype. I'm the first child under info types. I'm the first child under movies. I'm the first child under movie. Now I'm the second child under movies. Now I'm the third child under movies, etc. So that'll just help you decode what's down here. So this is where we've been so far. Whack whack availability says um, the availability tag wherever. Now I'm going to do dot whack. Oh, excuse me. Dot dot whack, which means go up one. That means go up one. And now where am I? Now I'm at the movie. Right, because I was at availability down here, see? And now if I go up one, which is dot, dot, slash, then I'm at the movie. And now I can say, for example, at ID. Now, what does that do? First of all, find me the availabilities anywhere in the file. Uh, oops, I think I needed a slash there. Let's see, did I? I need it. Sorry, I needed a slash between the availability and the dot dot slash. So, okay, this is the true path that we're looking for. This part says, give me the availabilities wherever they are in the file. Now, this part says, uh, let me get the exact part. This part says, go up one. And this part says, give me the ID. Now, I look down here and I see that I'm getting all of the IDs. Okay, so that dot dot slash one always needs to go up one, but it's kind of. Um, in, in this case, it's a little hard to understand it in the context of what came before. You had to be somewhere in order to go up one, right? I can't start out by going up one. So if I started my xpath with dot dot slash here, I'd be before the end, before the beginning of the file. This is all in the context of, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see this dot dot slash work a different way when we're inside of a current element or we have a tag that, um, uh, that we start from. In this case, we're starting from nowhere, so I first have to go down using the whack whack availability before I can go up. So the thing to the thing to take away from here most at the moment is that dot dot slash means go up one. And if I'm all the way down here at availability, going up one means from availability go up to the movie. Okay, so those are the special characters that we're going to um, that we're going to look at for now. We'll come back and we'll use these in the context of, of larger expressions later on.